All right, everyone. So, my last video, training with the best in the world. It only has like 6K views. Um, it's literally me, Joe, and Hunter um, doing a pretty cool back session. Lots of information in there. I basically did a Q and A um, on what we are, uh, what's gonna happen, different questions from previous videos. So if you guys haven't done that, uh, go check that out. But I'm gonna give a few cues and stuff that I did here with these two, and then I'm gonna answer some more questions on the old YouTube over here. So Hunter um, performed this set. I ended up catching the last like rep or two, um, and I noticed that the chest was caving just a tad at the bottom. Knees toward the end of the set were bending a little more than I would have liked, and using a little bit more uh, erector than I would have liked. So I gave her three cues, basically uh, knees out, knees back, and uh, eyes a little more up and forward instead of the whole bracing. Because they're very used to bracing around the belt and using it to get as much as much musculature involved as possible. So, so I walk in there at the last bit of the rep, and I kind of am talking to her a little bit about <clears throat> the next set and what we're going to do. But basically, um, they're used to bracing into the belt, and it leads to a... Instead of starting in that more lordotic position as you see me starting, um, well, once I get into the actual straight leg, they start in that super duper neutral spine where they are pushing against the belt, deep Valsalva maneuvers, and using tons and tons of muscle to move load through space. And that is powerlifting, and they're used to that. Um, compared to last week, Hunter. And Joe's straight leg deadlifts improved like dramatically. So um, they're getting better and better with using hamstring only. They're getting better and better with making sure they have a tight arched lower back. Um, and they're getting better and better with controlling the eccentrics. Uh, they're world class athletes. It doesn't take too many sessions. All their techniques are fucking phenomenal. So here Hunter is again. She's going into set number two. I tell her to start by finding the position. So notice she was going to deadlift it, and I said, find the position. That's what I yelled to her off, off camera. I like seeing people start from the floor or from whatever stance they need. So, like, if somebody is super inflexible, I honestly haven't ran into this too much, and most people who say they can't touch the floor while maintaining tension to the hamstrings are just running away from the hamstring stress because it fucking hurts when you get it down right. It hurts like a mother. Um, so whether you're starting from the floor, starting from some kind of blocks, um, get into that position and find the painful fucking stretch before you even do the exercise. Get into that, provide tension into the bar, and then pull the shit off the floor with your hamstrings. Um, you're going to notice how that feels. If you can do a toe touch, pushing your hips back, grabbing the bar, um, you're going to find the position. It's, it's impossible not to. So Hunter was going to deadlift. Instead of deadlifting, I said, please find, like, go ahead and find that position. The starting is the concentric because then you can end on the eccentric. You end by lowering the bar, and that's a completed rep. So here, find the position, pull it up. Go back to that same position you started in, pull it up. You will notice that I'm bending my knees just a tad more than them two, and this is intentional because I am still being cautious of my hamstring 10 weeks, 11 weeks ago, however long ago it was, my hamstring, like slight pull, it wasn't anything crazy, but I have nursed it back properly, I didn't rush, I didn't lose any size, um, I just made sure that I was doing things very progressively. So, um, with these two, it's very similar uh, cadence, very similar as far as the cues go. Joe is very erector dominant, so, with him, it's going to be about getting him into that more lordotic position. But even then, he's exposing the fuck out of his hamstrings here. And I don't have too many complaints for either of them. Again, world-class athletes. Training with them is fucking awesome. And even uh, when I'm going, they're even yelling cues at me that I'm yelling at them. And it's really fucking neat um, just to have that atmosphere. So, um, again, see my knees are a little more bent. I do do a couple reps where I try to straighten the legs a tad more, but I, I, t I start to feel a little bit of sensation in that same area that I pulled. Although that pull was um, on a hamstring curl, 
on the concentric phase. So it wasn't anything nuts. Um, that doesn't normally happen. I just hadn't slept and things like that. So I'm not too concerned with it here, but I am going to just work my way into that more straight leg, straight leg deadlift. So, and it's not terrible, the slight bend in the knees. Uh, I like that anyway. It feels really good for me. Um, I've kind of done that in the past as well. Uh, it's just I, I do end up chasing loads after a while. So I'm going to, instead of that, make sure that the, the uh, knees and legs are getting straighter and straighter. Like Joe here is performing these beautifully, and it makes sense. He's very fucking strong in the deadlift. I <clears throat> I doubt if I ever did a few strength blocks and tried to pull as much as he, d he does, I wouldn't. So it makes sense that he's doing 325 with straighter legs. And, um, again, we'll, we'll get him to use less erector eventually. Um, but these are these are phenomenal uh, very very minimal complaints and again they know what they're doing and if this feels great for them it feels great and I'm not going to make too many corrections just those first couple of weeks when we're like alright slow recentric slow recentric and when you're going to notice on the leg press like these two know how to fucking train because we get after it today I posted a brief clip of my leg press on Instagram and uh, <clears throat> it was super fucking intense but as the leg presses roll, um, you've heard me rant and jive about leg press technique a million times. So I'm going to answer some questions on the last video. Again, comment below on this video if you want more questions in the next one answered. Um, somebody asked me, how many AI girlfriends are enough? Uh, there are never enough. Um, and... Again, in the next one, he asks, will CRISPR replace weightlifting? So, first and foremost, when AI becomes a thing and full immersion and CRISPR is at its peak and we're able to genetic code, etc., I will completely turn down. So, like, if you think of everything, you have emotions um, as far as, let's say, anger and love and lust and all these things i will turn any sexual desire completely off and just be a productive work machine so ai girlfriends probably just uh you got a couple of years of that and then crispr is going to catch up and we'll see what happens hopefully the average iq goes up quite a bit um thoughts on fi ffmi lift limits with net within naturals uh free so fat free mass index is basically bullshit. Um, I it's not a good it's not a good marker of if somebody's natural or not. Like I surpassed the free, uh, fat free mass index by the time I was like probably eighteen years old. Um, there are genetic freaks out there. Um, it just happens, and when you find that you are good at something, you continue to do that thing. So. In natural bodybuilding, you tend to see a lot of natural freaks. Kind of makes sense. Um, they fell in love with weight lifting. Now, a lot of those people, same people, athletes, they fell in love with football or basketball or soccer, tennis, softball, whatever it was. And they did that instead. And that's why you don't see them on a natural bodybuilding stage. But... A lot of the guys that were natural that did really well and had a really high affinity for growing muscle were like, hey, I'm pretty good at this. I'm going to do steroids next. And they did it way too early. And then they could have been some of the best natural bodybuilders in the world. Um, had everybody on anabolic steroids not done anabolic steroids ever, you'd see the F fat-free mass index ex ridiculously high. Almost every professional athlete blows the fat-free mass index out of the water. And I know for a fact that most of them do not take anabolic steroids. Some do take performance-enhancing substances. Um... But it's just not a good indicator. It, uh, right, oh God, was it Greg? Greg Knuckles did a post about that back in like 2013 on Facebook, I remember, and just kind of dismantled the entire thing. Um, training a diet for late teen, different from someone who's fully grown up, or some notable differences, keep in mind when consuming the information on the internet. Somebody in their late teens who is just starting weight training, um, if they are... It just depends. There's a whole, there's a multitude of factors. So let's say there's somebody who's a sport athlete. Sport athletes probably need have uh, weight requirements or weight things to keep in consideration as far as their body weight goes. Like if you have a son who's 
190. He's going from, um, let's say, seventh grade. No, he's going from eighth grade to freshman year of high school. He was an offensive lineman in, in middle school. Obviously, he's 190 pounds. He's in class three football, let's say. Like, it's not huge. Class six is gigantic. And you want him to stay an offensive line because he was phenomenal at line. And you know that he has what it takes. Um, keeping his body weight where it is to slowly increasing or just letting it do what it does and not ruining his childhood experience with, well, let's keep dieting and dieting. Make sure he's getting enough lean meat. Make sure he's getting enough servings of veggies. And if he um, gains weight through high school and continues to be on an O-line and by the time he grad graduates high school, he's like 225 O-line and he'll get to college and then he'll really need to push it. So um, it really depends. If you are a scrawny kid who just got into weight training and you're kind of like, uh, let's say scrawny, skinny fat, 160 pound kid, uh, kind of a belly, keep their calories at maintenance and just let them lift and train and eat normally. Make sure the same uh, sort of like encompassing metrics with the proteins and the, and the micronutrients and things like that. Um, just the things I would avoid are throwing any teen into an extreme deficit or a deficit of almost any kind unless specifically told by a doctor that this child is like morbidly obese for their age and for their developmental period etc um you have a kid who you know gets to 10th grade and he's 400 pounds i don't know in any circumstance in which that's healthy unless he's like some samoan kid who's been lifting since he was 10 years old and has been playing sports his whole life, um, and he's like 6'5". You know, that, that kind of shit happens. <laughs> but extreme deficits, um, pushing body fats way too high, or just extremely restrictive diets for anyone who is still in middle school, high school, uh, is just something that I think is rather ridiculous. So hopefully that helps. Uh, if you want to ask follow-up questions there, feel free. I know it's pretty big and there's a lot of nuance and if this then this but I hope it helps um, allergic to fructose I'm curious I'll come back to this question maybe I'll answer it in your thing because I'm curious as to what you mean I don't know that a fructose sorry guys I feel like that's exceptionally fucking rare. I think you can have a fructose intolerance, potentially, but I don't know. Like, you you lack that, that, that a specific enzyme. I don't remember which one it is, but you can't break down the fructose. Um, yeah, I'll come back to that, and I'll... I'll I'll look into it and let you know what, what sort of... Because they're asking what sort of foods I would carve up on if I was allergic to fructose. But I mean like rice, you know what I mean? Rice, potassium supplementation is totally fine. Rice, any other thing like that, and uh, some sort of um, uh, potassium supplementation is totally fine. Um, stretching post-workout hurt muscle gains? Yes, it does. It does not help them. Um, sorry, some of these are very long to read. Um, do I know how to keep triceps out of lap prayers? I'm gonna always be working them. They hit failure before the back. Uh, go to Eugene Tiao's back workout that we did with him, and I provide an in depth um, technique workshop to Eugene in the comp or in the actual video. And then um, if you're still filling them, let me know. Hammer curls. Um, if you like them, you like them. You know, you can do hammer curls. I actually am doing them this meso. Um, they're great for forearms. They're a fine bicep exercise. There's just not a lot of supination. As long as you are lowering them very slow and not kind of like how I do my um, easy bar curls, slow and out in front of you, you're going to stretch the bicep really well. And you'll also hit the forearms pretty decently. So they're not a terrible exercise. I just am a big fan of the supination component in most bicep exercises. 
diet root beer is something my European mind can't comprehend. Well, we have it, bud. We have a lot of diet sodas. I did notice when I was in like London, um, when I went to Australia recently, places like that, they have like one diet soda. It's like diet Pepsi, diet Coke, diet Pepsi. I can't remember. But not the good shit we have here in the United States, to tell you that. Um, what is my pre-workout intro? I, I feel like that was quite literally in the video. Um, pre-workout is any pre that has some sort of caffeine. Um, I don't like, I don't like beta alanine. I don't like the tingles at all. Um, you can have citrulline in there. You can have arginine in there. Either are fine. I like arginine. Um, I've always gotten better pumps with arginine over citrulline by far. So I don't know where all the citrulline hype came from. One guy said it and everybody else follows suit. Um, so I'll do creatine, five to 10 grams, depending on body weight. Um, pre-workout with like 250 to 300 caffeine. And then I'll do arginine, like 2000 milligrams or so. That is my pre. My intro is literally, well and in the pre, I'll also put in some salt, about 560 to a gram. Intra, gram of salt. 50, 60 grams of carbs for now, right now, currently with this diet, and then 20, 25 grams of protein. That is precisely what is in mind. Let me scroll over and see how long the video has left, just so I don't time this shit out. Um, a few more sets of leg press here. I wonder if I can get away with unmuting our last couple of sets, because they were dirty. They were gnarly. I'm gonna unmute the last couple sets of this, and you guys can just ASMR if you'd like. So, uh, I will answer questions below this video. Please, 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 if I didn't answer one now, please re-put your question underneath this one. I'm gonna get this uploaded. Guys, have a good weekend. Uh, hopefully the next video can provide more insight. And I'm trying to get it to where I can mic us up, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, all right. Like, share, comment, all that good stuff. Really appreciate you guys for following along and everything. Uh, it's been a good time doing these. Uh, they don't take terribly long. And guys, I understand audio quality, f or video quality, whatever. This is how I'm doing them. I apologize. This is just how it's going to happen. Um, you can like it. You can hate it. You don't got to watch. RP Channel has great stuff. RP Channel has amazing content. I'm over there doing all kinds of uh, training videos, giving cues and all that good shit. So if you like the high production shit, hell yeah, go over there. If you like... Uh, if you like this kind of shit, you can watch. You don't have to. Um, I get it. It's it's not for everybody. But uh, for those of you that are enjoying it, I'll keep putting them out. And eventually, they'll be higher production. But here we go. Oh, I'm not scratched. Hold it. I heard you.